Would you believe the woman that sang this? was once one of the best known singing voices in Hollywood? Not many people know her name, but I can almost guarantee that you've heard Marnie Nixon's voice. No, 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 no. I'm Dara Star Tucker, and this is The Breakdown. If you love classic Hollywood musicals like I do, you've probably grown up listening to Marnie Nixon. You just didn't know it. She was a classically trained singer that ended up doing what's known as ghost singing for some of the most famous actresses in the world. It was a real life singing in the rain scenario. Just singing in the rain. Her first big job was as the vocal double for Deborah Carr in The King and I. She and Deborah worked really closely together to make sure that Marnie's voice lived well with the visuals. But 20th Century Fox was adamant that no one know that Deborah Carr hadn't done her own singing. Getting to know you. Deborah actually wanted to give Marnie credit for all her hard work. In March of 1956, Deborah told a reporter from the Desert Sun that Marnie had only helped with the high notes. Even this partial truth caused a pretty big scandal at the time. 20th Century Fox was furious. For all her hard work on The King and I, Marnie was paid a whopping $420. Natalie Wood worked very hard with a vocal coach to be able to do her own singing in West Side Story. United Artists wanted Marnie to shadow Natalie like she'd done for Deborah Carr in The King and I, but Natalie would not allow it. Natalie even recorded the entire soundtrack with the orchestra, thinking her voice would be used. But in the end, United Artists had Marnie go in and redo all of Natalie's parts because they didn't think her singing was quite up to par. Just listen. Nothing else but you. It was later revealed that the director, Robert Wise, was just humoring her. He never had any intention of letting Natalie do her own singing to begin with. They even had Marnie to do some of Rita Moreno's parts in West Side Story. Again, she didn't get any credit on the film's soundtrack, but this time, she insisted on being paid a percentage of the royalties. She stood her ground, and when the studio wouldn't relent, the composer, Leonard Bernstein, gave up a half percentage of his royalties to make sure that Marnie got paid. Her last big film was My Fair Lady with Audrey Hepburn. Audrey was a little more receptive to working with Marnie, but she still wanted to try to do her own singing. She too worked really hard with a vocal coach and recorded Wouldn't It Be Loverly for the studio. Audrey's natural voice fit the unrefined version of the Eliza Doolittle character very well, but the studio felt that the contrast between Marnie's voice and Audrey's was too extreme, so Audrey's voice wasn't used at all. She was devastated, though she was always gracious to Marnie. Since Julie Andrews originated the role of Eliza Doolittle on Broadway, there was a lot of backlash about Audrey, who was a bigger star at the time, being chosen for the film role, especially since she wasn't a singer. Many people feel that this was the reason for Audrey being shut out of the Oscars that year. Julie Andrews ended up winning for her role in Mary Poppins. But Marnie did finally make it to the big screen just once, as Sister Sophia in The Sound of Music. 